Welcome to episode 18 of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your host, Paul Ames, and if you're loving the guests and the content that we're putting out to you guys, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel by hitting the button at the bottom right of the page now. On the show today, we've got none other than Michael Griffiths, the referral marketing guru. Michael is the number one authority on referral marketing training and education, and has helped thousands of business owners around the globe with their referral marketing and generating leads through effective referrals. This episode is great for you in your career because you can also learn how to generate effective referrals if you're in a sales role to generate more business and income for yourself, or if you're looking to move into a new career to actually reach out to people effectively and how to do this in a successful way. Michael shares some absolute gold in this episode, and you can't wait to share this with you guys. So let's get started on the interview. Guys, welcome to episode 18 of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your host, Paul Ames, and on the show today, guys, we've got an incredible guest from Australia like me, Michael Griffiths. Michael is the number one authority in referral marketing training. He's helped hundreds of thousands of, thousands of people and thousands of businesses around the globe with their referral marketing, helping them to increase their business and connect with many people in their network and help themselves with referrals and referral marketing. So, Michael, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. I really appreciate your time. If you could just share with the audience basically a bit of uh, background on who you are, what your business does and, and what your upbringing was like for you. Yeah, lovely. And thank you, Paul. Absolute pleasure to be here and to be with the listeners also. Um, so, grew up in Melbourne, first 17 years of life in, in Melbourne, and then the next sort of 20 years now in Sydney. Um, grew up, as all, I suppose, Australians do, playing sport, so AFL, basketball, um, around sport 24-7. And if we could have 25 hours of the day, it'd probably be 25-7. So, <laughs> uh, but, Left, um, went, went into from school to do Bachelor of Education, became a teacher. Uh, so, teacher for a decade, um, both primary school, high school maths, and also elite level basketball coach. So, oh, wow. Started, yeah, started coaching basketball, representative basketball when I was 10. Um, so, went through coach representative basketball, coach state basketball, state level basketball, uh, assistant coach to two Olympic teams in 2000 and 2004, uh, collegiate basketball over in the US, and wow. then uh, came back in 2007, um, got tired of the teaching, um, not the kids, the the uh, adult side of things, the laziness of some teachers, and went, you either have to put up with this for the next 40 years or go do something different. So we decided to go do something different. Um, that's where I saw a, a need, at 30 kids in the classroom, there were kids getting left left behind um, just purely because you just can't learn with 30 kids. So we started a, an education centre and provided tutors to people's homes. Okay. So within nine months, uh, we built that up to 480 families that we serviced, service up and down sort of Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, 180 tutors and got bought out in about nine months um, by a bigger tutoring company than what we were. So that was the, sort of the first venture into business. Um, from there, have created, uh, this is the seventh business, have sold six, had a, uh, an empire of a, of a marketing agency with clients all around the globe, and in 2013 sold that to a Canadian group, and then niche just down into referral marketing, um, where, yeah. where now we travel the globe helping businesses. So I still see it as teaching, we just teach adults rather than children. Exactly right. Wow. Thanks so much for sharing that, Michael. And I have to say, I'm so proud of you for everything you've achieved. I've uh, yeah, followed a fair bit of what you've done and yeah, you should be so proud of yourself. I, yeah, I didn't know about your other businesses. That's that's amazing. And uh, yeah, tutoring, especially obviously, you know, when you see the, the pain points or there's a gap in the market where things aren't being served or produced, I think that's a brilliant way to, to get into it like you have done. So yeah, massive congrats on everything you've achieved. No, thank you. So, Michael, um, just going back from some of your previous careers, so obviously you know, you're in teaching for a while. What would you say are some of your biggest uh, learnings or takeaways from your previous careers and, and why were they so important to you? Yeah, if I was to probably look back now, knowing what I know, having set up businesses and be better networked and have better networks around us and better people around us, it'd probably be that that from a, from a very young age, when I say young, I suppose you probably can from about year nine, year 10 um, onwards, 
is really try to establish some good people around you that you might be able to call upon later on down the track in life. Definitely. So I, I know people who, who right now, I, mean, I met one, uh, must be now about three weeks ago, who was just finishing up their education degree and was going to be looking in 2017 for, for some um, place to go, some place to teach. Well, because of our background, I pretty much could go, great, pick a school in the Northern Beaches of Sydney, and I can give you an introduction to that assistant principal principal because I knew every single one of them. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's around not ever thinking that you're too young to start establishing a network around you that might be able to help you later down in life. So that, that's something which I sort of look back on. And back then, unless you're taught that, you've got no idea, A, how important it is, or B, how useful it can be by just being able to meet people, talk to people, and just keep people's names and addresses and phone numbers for maybe somewhere down the track, depending on what you decide to do. Definitely. Wow, that's, that's great advice. And I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's probably the biggest thing that's helped me. Once you realize your strengths, like I know my biggest strengths are definitely building relationships and building rapport with people and, and increasing my network. And that's definitely been the best thing that's helped me, especially moving forward in business, but uh, also in your life. Like, yeah, so that, that's great advice, guys. Go back and really take notice of what Michael's just said there. Thanks for sharing that, Michael. No, pleasure, pleasure. I think it's you're never really too young either, um, maybe year nine, ten you are, but certainly come year 11, to start using your, your social platforms as a network gathering tool. Now, whether you want to have fun on your Facebook and that's fine, but there's nothing that stops you from also creating your own little LinkedIn profile that shows you as a professional person for you to start being able to gather some of those networks for what you want to do in three, four, five years' time, and that's probably going to change also. So you just never know by keeping people around you how useful that might be. Exactly. Uh, it's funny you say that, actually. I just saw a post yesterday on Facebook by somebody saying that, you know, a lot of people underutilize social media for what it's designed for, and that's building relationships and connections with people, not just, you know, looking at random videos of cats or things like that. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I myself teach a lot of LinkedIn training as well with relation to your career and how to, you know, find prospects or find jobs from LinkedIn. So, yeah, really powerful tools when known how to utilize, be utilized, right? So, yeah, that's so true. Cool. So, Michael, um, obviously we've all got a really positive ha uh, habit or trait that's really helped us move forward in our life or get the success that we've uh, achieved, but we've also got a hindering habit. What would you say would be your most successful habit that's helped you move forward? And also, what would you say would be one of your biggest hindering habits? Yeah, it's probably the same thing. Um, and, it, and it's probably just transformed from being hindering to now being something that's actually um, helpful. For, for most people, taking a first step is quite difficult, especially removing a safety net. So when I, as a teacher, I went, oh, well, now let's go and start a business, there's a safety net there of being a teacher. There was a fortnightly wage coming in. There was always going to be food on the table. There was always going to be a roof over your head. And you go, well, hold on, if you're going to remove that to go do this, what happens if you're not successful at it? And then you have all of those wonderful thoughts that, that are in our heads, which are supposed to be there to keep us safe. Definitely. So it's amazing when you understand your conscious and your subconscious and their roles. But at that time, well, that was a hindrance because it stops you from ever doing things. And, and I think these days it's very much a go do it because what's the worst thing that happens? Yep. It doesn't work out and you go back and you do something else. Because I think if I was able to think how I do now back then, I would have said to myself, oh, well, go give this a try. And in six months' time, if it doesn't work, guess what? You just go back and you do casual teaching. Exactly. Uh, so that without, it's, without a doubt, because I reckon I probably sat for a good six, seven, eight months of not being happy teaching, going, I'm too afraid to remove the safety there. Yep. So... Um, uh, as I said, it's probably a bit of both now in a positive way, but back then it was a definitely a negative way. And, and I speak to people all the time, I'd love to be able to do this, I'd love to be able to do that. And the question is, well, why don't you? Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't, what happens if it doesn't work? So very much the safety net is there to protect us. But if you ask yourself, well, what's the worst thing that happens? And if it's, as long as it's not 
I die, we lose our house, we have no food, etc. then isn't it worth just taking a chance? Definitely, man. Couldn't agree more. And like, yeah, I, I deal with a lot of that, obviously coming from my counselling background. It's like, you know, people say these, these limiting beliefs or automatic thoughts that pop into their head. And like you said, once you understand your conscious and subconscious or your ego and realise that it's just trying to protect you, it's a thing from the primitive days that, you know, it's trying to protect you from or keep you alive when, you know, a lot of the time we realise that things are never as bad as they seem. So by taking that leap, as you said, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to end up in a similar sort of role in a different organisation or even the same organisation. So that's great advice, Michael. Thank you. No, pleasure. So, Mark, I've got a bit of a random question I always ask my guests. Uh, this comes from, like I said, my counselling background. It's called the miracle question. So, imagine if you went to sleep tonight and overnight a miracle had occurred and when you woke up the next morning, everything you ever wanted in your life or any impact or anything you wanted to change had come true. What would be that massive impact uh, and, and change that you'd really want to create and why would it be so important to you? Yeah, okay, nice, nice. <laughs> um, so, so already we have um, our own foundation and our foundation supports underprivileged animals that don't have a voice, underprivileged children in Australia so they can get a better education. And we do it within Australia. We appreciate there's a bigger globe and there's a lot of organisations already helping children in third world countries and so forth, which is why we want to focus within our own backyard and breast cancer. Yep. So they're the three things that have been affected um, in our life that we went, that's what we want our foundation to do. Okay. So to be able to have the resources, to be able to have that at a level we see it being in the next five years, that would be unbelievable to have that happen overnight. Um, and, and I see that as certainly... Um, a big part of, of not only us being able to contribute, uh, so far little ones, three and a half, and, and already understands um, that the joys of being able to sort of help others and, and that's a big part of um, being able to teach her that at the same time. So, yeah, that would be, that would be nice that we'd have the resources and whatever they happen to be to be able to help um, all aspects of, of the foundation would be wonderful. That's perfect. Wow. And I have to say, congratulations on your foundations. That's amazing. That, uh, and, and that your three and a half year olds, you know, learning of, is brushing off a lot of the, the actions and what you guys are doing. So that, that's amazing, you know, teaching our youth those sort of things and contributing and giving back. So that's brilliant, Michael. No, lovely. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I can completely relate. It's, uh, yeah, definitely all about, you know, giving back and you know, realising that the world's a lot bigger than us. So, yeah, that, that's great, Michael. So back in your basketball coaching days, so obviously you've learned a lot about um, contributing, uh, building a team and keeping a team motivated and driven. Obviously a lot of my audience is a professional audience where, you know, they're mostly in teams, they might be in leadership roles, but what would you say would be the most important learnings you've received and, and gained from, you know, being at high-level or elite-level basketball teams? Yeah, um, and, and even to this day with, with some of the, the different businesses that we've got fingers in, in where we do have teams around us and, and even within our own um, teams and organisations that we have, it always comes down to why. why. Why is somebody doing that? What is their motivation for doing that? And I think when you talk and had those sorts of conversations of what's your motivation, what's your reason why, then as you understand that better, you can lead better. And for most, most of us, we just go, great, we're going to lead our way. Well, leading our way just doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to help them achieve their goal. And if they're not going to achieve their goal, well, why would they bother? Exactly. So uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, a big part, of, and even, even within what we do day in, day out, there's no point in going, oh, great, Paul, come work with us and we'll just take your money. That's pointless. We're going to work out, well, why do you want to do it? What are the things that are motivating you for us to be able to go, well, good, let's see if there's some sort of plan that we can put in place that is actually going to get you to achieve what you want to achieve. That's and right. when you take that same philosophy back into any sort of, of uh, leadership role, teams, and you have those sorts of conversations, all of a sudden now you've got an awful lot of motivated people who actually want to do things and therefore are going to be far more productive. 
Exactly. Wow, that's great advice. Yeah, and like I was saying before, yeah, realizing that it's bigger than you. Obviously, when you're in a team, yeah, it's funny. You, you go back to the old thing as well of you know bosses and leaders, and leaders lead from the front and help real like collaborate and work with the rest of their team. So yeah, great advice, guys. Go back and have a listen to that. If you're a leader or looking to progress in your organisation, there's some great tips there from Michael. So, Michael, I'd love to know, obviously, um, yeah, coming from my career counselling background, what would you say would be your uh, best bit of a career advice you've ever received or you've ever heard from anywhere? Yeah, you was always going to be one question that stumped me and, yeah. and you've come up with it. Because unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately in the teaching profession, most principals are there through rank rather than through their leadership. So... Um, I've got to really think if any of them, in fact, the very first one, um, great gentleman, we were out sort of in the, in the rural areas of New South Wales and um, what, what he installed was be there for the right purpose. Yep. So when, when, we first, when I first started and I was literally very first job I was at, it would be very easy at 21, 22 to go, great, I'm turning up every day because I'm getting paid. Well, that's not sustainable. You can't live a life like that. So if you had the right purpose of being somewhere, it was always going to be fun, it was always going to be enjoyable, and therefore everyone was going to get far more from it. And, and I still remember that to take that into most context of, of what we do within our life and we go, well, what's the real purpose of you being here? We don't create uh, referral marketing guru for the purpose of making money. What does that money actually do? What does it allow us to be able to be, have, live, experience, help, all of those other things that are around it, and that's its real purpose? Because I think when you dig down into your real purpose, you're far more passionate and you enjoy things rather than it sitting on the, on the so I suppose, the top level of I see money going to my bank account every week, every fortnight, every month. Uh, you're going to lose motivation and, and passion getting up for that reason versus what is it actually doing for you. Definitely. Wow, that's great. And I couldn't agree with you more. Like, it's, it's really funny. I mean, it took me to the whole reason I have so much passion for my business is because it took me till I was 30 to figure out what I really wanted to do. And, you know, my whole life I'd had the upbringing of, you know, just get a job, just get money. doesn't matter if you like it. Like, I didn't have much guidance from my family. So, yeah, finally finding something that you're passionate about and obviously not wanting other people to go through the, the negative emotions and, and feelings that I have, you know, kind of lights you up. And I don't even look at it for money. I look at it for helping people and, you know, the bigger reason. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's great advice what you've just shared with us. So, guys, yeah, look, look for your why and what's really going to light you up inside. I think that's, that's what's the key to making a difference and making an impactful life for yourself. So, Mike, well, I'd love to know what, would, what are three to five actionable tips that you've learned that you really think could benefit my audience either progressing in their career or to find a career path they really desire? Yep. Yeah. Um, first, first one is understanding where you want to go. So I suppose understanding your own vision, your own mission, and it doesn't matter uh, where you're a professional, whether you're in university right now about to come out, and you might not go, that's my finishing point. It just might be my next step. But you've got to be clear on what it is that you want. I think too many people just float and sail through doing, I'm just doing this because I've got nothing else. Yep. In today's world, no one has to float and sail through for anything. There are so many opportunities out there for you to be able to do and take if that is what you want to do. And um, unfortunately, I don't think people think about it enough to what is it I really want to do. So that would be the starting point. Second point is just being proactive in, in going and getting it. These days, you can reach absolutely every single person through social media. So whether you wanted to speak to the CEO of, of a big organisation that you wanted to work at, well, these days you can. You don't have to go knock on the door and hope that the the, the executive assistant or the secretary lets you in, you can get straight to them. So it's about being proactive and if it's something you want, then, hey, the front door might close, well, there's a back door. The back door closes, that's fine. There's two side doors and if they close, lift the roof off and if that <laughs> doesn't come off, go underneath. Like there's exactly. just so many ways you can do it that just don't give up in doing it if that's what you want to do. 
Um, when I look at the people within our organisation, and I am so picky in terms of people, um, I don't believe that anyone has a right for a job and I don't believe that um, I've got to hire certain types of people. I'll hire the people who are right and show the initiative to say, hey, pick me. I'm going to do everything in my power, wave my hands around, jump up and down, that you can't miss me. That's the sort of person that I want. So try to be that person. Like, there's no reason that you just go, oh, I'll fill in my resume and my application and I'll post it off and I'll sit back and wait. Yeah. No. What else can you do to make sure that you're being seen? Definitely. If, if I look at, sometimes we'll, I'll just take the last thing that we uh, put, a, put an ad up for and we had nearly 220 responses. Wow. I'm not going to look through all of those. No. Straight away, I'll look at the front page and that's my first thing that you're going to get through. So that got rid of like 200 of them straight away. So, and in the end, there was one person that you just could not pick them. That they were, they were that, hey, just checking in. Is there anything else I can do to be able to help answer any questions? They were, hey, here I am, here I am, here I am. Now, don't get me wrong. You can take that too far. It becomes stalking. Don't do that. <laughs> the, these days, it's just so easy for you to get in front of people Definitely. if that's your desire to do so. So make a little bit of an extra effort. And uh, the third thing I'd probably say is very much around use your, next, use your networks better because yep. you all have friends, you all have family, you all have people around you. Don't worry about so much do they know that person. Let them ask their network if they know that person. So you might be going for, for some sort of, uh, let's go, position in Deloitte and, okay, you've never been in a corporate before and you've got a couple of friends or family that are, good. They might not have an into the HR manager of Deloitte. Ask their network. Hey, I'm looking to be able to apply for something at Deloitte. Deloitte. Say, hey, do you mind just putting it out on your social media? Does anyone know the HR manager? Because I'd love to be able to send them something personally. So again, just use the resources that we have around us to be more proactive to then be able to get the sorts of things that you're looking for. Don't sit back and then go, oh, I didn't get it. Well, you didn't get it because you weren't proactive enough to get it. So that's, I suppose, the, the whole message. That's brilliant. I love that advice. And, yeah, just touching on that, I think that's one of the biggest things, like especially when I started my show. Obviously, I've only done, you know, eight, 18 episodes now. But, you know, after episode seven, I managed to get Matt Monero and Grant Cardone on my show. And, uh, yeah, that was all from me stretching out, just going, uh, my, my view on people is everybody's the same in my eyes. I don't care what your net worth is. I don't care what, who, what your status is or anything like that. And so I, don't be afraid to reach out to people. Don't be put off by these so-called titles or whatever they've got. Or as you said with the CEOs, there's so many good tools like Zoom Info you can use where you can find out the, the details of these CEOs or things like that. So, yeah, I think that's great advice. Just, yeah, stretch out. Reach out to these people. You know, I did that with Grant Cardone. I... Uh, Realised I didn't have much of a, an audience at the time, um, so I actually sent a book to his office that I found. I said to him, what's your favourite book that you're looking forward to receiving? And I actually sent that to his office in Miami and left a note saying, Grant, you might as well come on my show because I'm going to be persistent and not give up till you agree. And he said, nice, let's schedule it. <laughs> so, but I guess that works with different people. I knew from his uh, paying from his courses and stuff like that that that's the sort of person he liked and that's what he, he would you know go for. So I, I realised that was hit my approach there, but... Yeah, I think that, that's great advice you shared, Michael, and use your networks and just tap into the, the people you know, put it out there into the world. So, yeah, really great advice there. So, Michael, um, just getting ready to wrap up soon, but what would you say would be uh, one of the best books, tools or resources that really helped you in your life, either in your career or in your business? Yeah, um, and I've got it. I'm just having a bit of a look at the bookshop. <laughs> uh, there's one, and I just want to be able to make sure I get it right. I think a great one is called Outwitting the Devil. Nice. And it's um, so it is sort of on the path of Napoleon Hill and um, Sharon Letcher who did that. But um, if you sort of look for Hill Letcher, Outwitting the Devil. Um, and, and it's, yeah, quite unique in that it's sort of got two stories going on, one if you follow the left page and one if you follow the right page all the way through the book. 
and um, it's, it's very much having a conversation around your inner voices and how our inner voices say this and how we can tell it to go away and know we're going to do this. And, uh, I think it's a, a great personal development book to understand why we think the way we think and why, we, why our inner voices do what they do to keep us safe and how we can still go past that and do the things that we want to do. Perfect. That's brilliant. I'll link that in the show notes too, guys, for you. So just touching on that, I guess, Michael, um, what would you say, obviously, with your businesses, your multiple businesses you've built up and sold and your current business, what would you say would be some of your biggest mental roadblocks that you've uh, been faced with and how have you overcome some of these? I think the biggest one is, is trying to get everybody or wanting everybody to like you and like what you do. And that's just impossible. Definitely. And, and there, are, there are many of actions that I haven't done because I didn't want people to go, oh, I don't like that, and then move away. Mm-hmm. Where, in fact, sure. it's actually not about that. It's just about people are on different journeys, different paths, life is in their way, life is ready for it. There's so much that is external to me that I can't control. And by the time I figured all of that out, um, that took a a little bit of time to realise that, hey, you need to speak to the people who are interested and like what you're about, and that's the only people that you can speak to because you can't control anything else. Wow, that's, that's great advice. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And I think it's a, a big learning I've gone through myself as well. And I'm sure a lot of people have as well, where you know, I came from quite a people pleasing, you know, as I said, didn't want people to hate what I was doing, didn't want people to not like me. And I think you realise that and, and, and attracting like not as good quality clients that I really wanted, as opposed to now where you know, I've gone through a lot of coaching, a lot of help from other business networks and connections and realised that, you know, to charge what I'm worth, to change my mindset, and thus now I attract the sort of client that I really want to help. Like you said, you know, you want to help people not just for money. You want to help people for the reason of wanting to change their life or, you know, make something incredible that's actually going to do something in their life. So, yeah, I think that's really valuable advice there. Lovely. So, so Michael, I'd uh, also just uh, I'd love to know um, what, where can guys get everyone get in contact with you? What's the best place to reach out with you or your, your, your social media links or anything like that? Yeah, probably the best place. We just go michaelgriffiths.com.au and then from there, um, everything everything sits on there. So please, yeah, come come join us or, or you can easily... No, just go to michaelgriffiths.com.au. I was going to confuse people. Um, <laughs> Biobanks, we're, we're Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, um, Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook. So we've, we've got the lot. Please come hang out. Love for, for people to be able to um, ask questions if you've got questions. Always happy. Always respond. I always monitor those because uh, networks and our community are important to me. So, yeah, please come say hello and hang out. Definitely. And uh, I'll link all those social media links in the show notes to, uh, below. We'll take up the page for them. <laughs> but, Michael, I wanted to thank you so much for being on my show. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. I really appreciate your time and love the work you do. So keep up the amazing work. And I'd, uh, I'd also love to welcome you to the Career Breakthrough Tribe. So thank you very much for coming on and uh, sharing your message and your learnings with my audience. Absolute pleasure. It's been wonderful and look forward to being able to be part of the tribe. Definitely. Thank you so much, Michael. And guys, stay tuned, stay tuned next week where we've got another incredible guest on who's really going to help you smash forward into your career and get to those levels you really want to be. I'll see you then, guys. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. If you've loved the content that Michael shared with you today, be sure to head to the link above for his referral success kit, which is really going to help you if you're in a sales role or where you can generate more referrals and more leads and business and more income for your job. Or if you're in your career and looking to connect with more people to help you move forward in your career, head to the link above, which is bit.ly forward slash referral success kit, R E F E W R. A-L-S-U-C-C-E-S-S-K-I-T. Michael shares some absolute gold in this, and I've personally downloaded this resource. It's absolutely amazing. So guys, be sure to head to the link above and download the referral success kit for yourself. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate your time and for taking time out of your day to check out my episodes. So stay tuned next week for another amazing guest that's going to come on our show and really help you move forward in your career. 
Bye, guys.